in the last video I gave the example of this bank that I keep using and in this example as opposed to giving the gold out to make loans and be used for projects and that gold get redeposited and then relent out what we did in this example is that the bank every time it made a loan it just made a loan and that created an asset and then it had a corresponding liability where the liability was either a checking account that the entrepreneur could use or bank notes which are essentially cash that the entrepreneur could use to pay their laborers or to buy their land or whatever they needed to do so the, a, an obvious question was how much could a bank do it? When, when does this stop? Can a bank just keep increasing the left and right hand sides of the balance sheets? And to answer this question, we'll introduce the idea of a reserve ratio. So just a, I guess a bit of a review and just to make sure we're clearly reading this balance sheet. And let me label things a little bit more because sometimes I assume too much. Remember, this is, these are the assets. The assets are all of these. Let me make a bold line here. All of this is the assets of this bank, including its building, so that's vault down there. And then the liabilities, I'll do that in this, maybe I'll do it in red, I don't like this red color, it's a little black, but these are the liabilities over here in this red color that I'm coloring in right now. And the equity. Whoever owns the bank, whether it's stockholders or maybe it's owned by an individual, maybe it's owned by me, is what's left over. This is the, yeah, I'll do it in a nice neutral color. This is the equity. So the question is, how much can the bank, and of course this, let me do all of this was liabilities. Liabilities. So the question is, how much can the bank continue to issue out more loans and increase its assets and its liabilities. Remember, every time it issued a loan, like for here, right right here, it issued a 100 gold piece equivalent loan to D. And instead of giving D 100 gold pieces from, say, right here, it just created a checking account for D, which later D paid to A, and that's why it's labeled A right here. And let me relabel another thing, because the gold is different colors, just so you see the gold. This is all the, this is the gold part of the assets. Let me make that very clear, that all of this right here is gold. Maybe I'll color it in a little bit. That's all gold and there's 500 gold pieces. 500 gold pieces. So let's introduce the concept of a reserve ratio. Reserve ratio. Now let's think a little bit about what, what even a reserve is. A reserve is something that you keep aside because you might need it one day. Right? And in this situation, all of these liabilities, whether they're these bank notes outstanding in this example, or whether they're these checking accounts, these demand accounts, these are all liabilities that someone can come back to the bank on any given day and say, hey, I want my gold now. For whatever reason, maybe I'm leaving town, maybe I don't trust the bank anymore. For whatever reason, maybe they just want to build to make some jewelry. For whatever reason, that person wants their gold back. These are demand accounts. These checking accounts are demand accounts, and these notes are, are things that can be exchanged for gold at any point in time. And we talked a little bit about this earlier when we started the whole banking uh, discussion, but you have to leave aside a little bit of gold just in case someone, someone wants their gold back. So this amount of the gold that you have to leave aside as a reserve relative to the total amount of demands you have on that gold, that's the reserve ratio. So the reserve ratio, and in this situation, this world that we've created, the, the, reserve, uh, the, the, re the reserve store value is gold. Later on, we're gonna get ourselves off of this gold system, and then that reserve, that reserve store of value is actually going to turn into to cash. But for right now, and I think it's easier actually to conceptualize gold, let's stick with gold. The reserve ratio is for this bank is the amount of gold assets. You won't see this formal definition anywhere because no one, most people are off the gold standard right now. But it's the amount of gold assets divided by total. 
I don't want to say total liabilities because the bank could take out loans that aren't demand loans. Everything on the liabilities right now are on demand loans, which means whoever has that liability can come back and exchange it for gold at any moment in time. But we could the bank could have to taken just a regular loan, and a regular loan might not be on demand. A regular loan might be a loan that the bank doesn't have to pay back for 10 years, and in which case there's there's no reason why the bank would have to set aside some gold to pay that back. So let's let's make our definition not total liabilities, but total demand liabilities. Total demand liabilities. Li liabilities. Whoops. Liabilities. So what would be total demand liabilities? That would be total total banknotes in this case. And banknotes are also something we'll, you know, we'll, we'll later leave a world where every bank is issuing banknotes. But I just wanted to give you that kind of historical context, how banknotes even started up. Total banknotes and demand accounts. Demand or checking accounts. Demand checking accounts. So let's see what it is for this bank that we have here. So our total gold assets are 500. And what's our total demand accounts? Let's see. It's a 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 400, 600, and I think this was another 100 here, 700. So it equals, see, the total demand liabilities I just figured out was 700. And the gold assets in this bank are 500. 500. So right now, the reserve ratio of this bank is, is pretty high, 5 7 So I don't know what 5 7 is. 5 7 is, I don't know, 7 goes into 5 how many times? 60, if I'm doing my mental math right, it's about 62%. 7 goes into 50, no, 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 7 goes into 57 times, 7 times, so it's like 71%. Right, 7 times 7 is 49, right? 71%, so that's its reserve ratio. And what keeps banks from just keep issuing more assets and debts to expand its balance sheet is a reserve ratio requirement. So right now in the United States, although we're not on the gold standard, but you could imagine in this world, our bank regulators might, might say that your reserve ratio on demand accounts, so the amount of gold you have to set aside for checking accounts, so reserve requirement, we'll call it. Let me change colors just to ease the monotony. Reserve requirement. They might say the reserve requirement is equal to, let's say they want to be safe. Let's say they want to be, they want to make it 20%. In the U.S. right now, it's 10%, although the reserve uh, commodity isn't gold anymore. But let's say your reserve requirement is 20%. That means as long as, in, on any given, at any given moment in time, more than 20% of these people don't demand their money back, the bank's going to have liquidity. The bank is, is going to be able to fulfill its promise. Because all of these people think at any given moment they can go to the bank and get their gold. And in order for this system to work, there has to be confidence. And in order for there to be confidence, the bank has to be good for it every time someone asks for their money. So the bank has to stay liquid. So essentially, this reserve ratio is what the regulators think that a bank needs to maintain in order to maintain be liquid. Our, our bank, as it is right now, it has a reserve ratio of 71%. So as long as no more than 71% of these people, you know, some of these loans, these might be out for a year or two. So as long as in that year or two that these loans are out, as long as no more than 71% of these people come asking for don't come asking for their gold, we should be okay. If all of a sudden, for whatever weird reason, I don't know, 80% of these people who have uh, demand deposits or banknotes come and want to switch their money for gold, this bank is going to run out of gold, and that's a bank run. And, and, and there's, there's a couple of reasons why that's really bad. One is, all of a sudden, these, these demand deposit accounts all, all of a sudden don't seem to be that great because you're not really getting your gold on demand because more people are asking for gold than there is gold. And then the other problem is all of a sudden everyone will lose confidence in the system and everyone's going to think, boy, these banks that have these nice vault looking buildings, maybe they're not as safe as I thought. So everyone is going to start pulling their money out. And that's called a bank run. So in this example, if I assume that this loan is really worth 300 gold pieces and it's really going to be paid back, and this loan right here is really worth 100 gold pieces and it really will be paid back, 
this bank is solvent. It has more assets than it does liabilities. So it has, if it has enough time, it will be able to pay back every, all of its liabilities. But if all of these people all of a sudden come in and want not just 500 gold pieces, if they want if they want 600 gold pieces, right? They're owed actually 700. So if they want 600 gold pieces, all of a sudden everyone is going to lose confidence in the system. These people probably, if they're not able to get that, they're probably going to want all their money back. So then all of these liabilities are going to come due. And then maybe the bank is going to have to try to sell these assets, this, these loans to someone else, or maybe try to collect from someone. But as you can imagine, it's, it's a whole, uh, it's a big mess. And the whole system, that, which is dependent on confidence, will just start to crumble. But anyway, the, the initial question is, what is the limit to how much you can expand the asset and the liability side of the balance sheet just by creating these loans and these deposit accounts? And that limit is driven by the reserve ratio, whatever the regulators set. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.